it's a one ball game it's a one ball game the batsman makes one error and he could be walking back if he is uh, if he has to build his confidence the mind plays the best role thing is we should not make a mistake between technique and style batsman may have the scientific aspects of the game will remain the same it has to be a four face of the bat it has to be you know we're hitting the ball from the middle of the bat the, all those things stay in their place styles may differ not everybody may be uh, able to visualize positively but if they can develop the habit of self talk and talking to themselves about all the good things that are possible and uh, what they are capable of doing how what they worked on and what they are set out to achieve i think that will help them in a big way one golden rule is that good use of feet good footwork soft hands these are uh, the primary requirements if i can combat the spin and turn using my feet i think half the battle would be won Uh, I am a very very strong believer that batting is about so much about reactions. Cricket love stories with me Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Erfan Seth. Erfan, yes. how's it all going in India? All very good. Thank you very much. Things seem to be settling down, and uh, we are all grateful, thankful for this revival. And uh, I think there are smiles on the uh, people's faces. Lots of cricketers uh, are back on the field, and they are all doing very well. That's good to hear. I hope it's the same in the UK. Yep, it's looking up now. So before we get into the specifics of you, this video, it's all going to be about batting, and you're going to talk to us about some tips for youngsters. before we get into the specifics let's talk a little bit about your background and career director of the Karnataka Institute of Cricket talk us through it yeah i would be very happy to do that i've done it so many times and it always gives me a little bit of recharge you see uh i started as a small time cricketer who was absolutely in love with the game and uh, as people know uh, in india cricket is quite a passion almost to the uh, point of being a religion now it's uh, it dates back to the 20th of november 1969 when uh, gundappa vishwanath scored that uh, century and debut and that was my first initiation in the game i knew nothing about the game until such time but when i saw everyone talking about it and there was a, a huge euphoria about a young uh, indian batsman getting a 100 on debut against the mighty australians that really got me uh, hook line and sinker and from there on it's been cricket and cricket and i've simply loved doing what i'm doing now as a, a small time cricketer those days we had absolutely no clue no pathway no one to guide we just played our own game we enjoyed everything that we did and it gave me a great opportunity to know a lot of people get into a, a lot of uh, you know uh, mateship and then as uh, Uh, we grew i found a club swastik union cricket club where i could uh, play and then soon i was the captain of the side now while playing i realized that you know this game has a lot to offer there's so much to learn from this not only on the field but it has a connect with life itself and then soon i realized one fine day i have to stop uh, playing because i was not getting younger so I wanted to stay connected one way or the other with the game so I thought the best way to do that would be to uh, be coaching because as a captain of the side I was doing a fair bit of uh, instructing which in turn in other words would be coaching and then uh, guiding uh, scouting and you know, all that that uh, a coach normally does I was already doing uh, as a captain of the club now we made a tour to Australia in 1996 early 1996 i remember it was the 13th of jan when we went there and while others all my other teammates who had been on the cricket tour they were socializing and partying and pub hopping me and my twin sons we visited a lot of academies i am grateful and thankful to some people who helped me like dr umapati dr harinath they took me around to various academies in australia now i realized that there is a structured way of coaching in australia and then there was a 
method of running academies. I wanted to do that in India. When I got back, the first thing I started looking and trying to do is set up a cricket academy. And on 19th April 1996, we inaugurated our academy and it's a good 25 years. And I can promise you, I've enjoyed every bit of this. Every day, every month, every year has been fruitful. And we have seen so many cricketers grow. Now, to name a few of these cricketers, I would like to say ladies first and say Lushin Al Khadir was the first cricketer to play for India, uh, women, uh, women's cricket. And then uh, followed by Robin Uttapa, Manish Pandey, Mayank Agarwal, and now Dev Dutt Padikar. Of course, there have been other women cricketers, lots of them who have uh, made the grade. Now, uh, I must mention Mamta Mabin, Captain India. Uh, Karuna Jain was the India vice captain and she got 100 against uh, uh, England as the vice captain, wicketkeeper, by opening batswoman. She got 100 against uh, England at Eden Gardens, Calcutta. And then, of course, we have Veda Krishnamurti, Vanita VR. And today I stand very proud and tall when I realized that we had given a captain to, to the USA women's cricket team, Sindhu Ashok. Now, after marriage, she is uh, Sindhu uh, Harsha. And then, of course, there are other players. We also have a small contribution towards English cricket, where Sonia Odedra, who trains with us, played test cricket for England. And, of course, there are other internationals. I cannot forget to mention Anuradha, who started cricket in Germany, and today she leads the German uh, women's team. She is all of 34 years, but she is a scientist and the captain of Germany. So th these are the things that really pep us up, give us the encouragement, the enthusiasm, and, uh, you know, get us to work harder and better, hopefully. So this is the little story that I would like to share with you. There's an absolutely phenomenal system you've got in place. Let's delve into the secrets. What are your main philosophies when it comes to batting in general? Well, uh, everyone loves to bat. Even the bowlers today want to bat. Now, we realize that batting is the mantra. That's something which attracts all the young ones. Uh, when it comes to the philosophy of batting, the first thing we see is uh, the young ones have a fair opportunity to have a hit in the net or in the middle. Wherever there's an opportunity, we have to create those opportunities. And the first thing that we do is make sure that they're enjoying. They're coming with dreams in their eyes and they've got some, you know, uh, vision. So we need to try and give them what they believe that they can become. Give them a platform where, you know, they have a chance to uh, get better, improve, progress and uh, put themselves in, up for selection as and when they have an opportunity. So when it comes to batting, yes, we do, do not insist so much in the beginning. In the beginning, we don't insist so much on uh, the correctness of the technique or whatever. We first make sure that they are enjoying. And then we make sure that they learn to hit because then they learn how to survive, to play longer and to get better. So if the enjoyment aspect is there and they have enough opportunities and they're treated fairly, uh, they, when they think that they are wanted in the team, that's when they come forward and try and work harder. So this is something which we have uh, ensured. We also inculcate the small-sided games. We try and give them, you know, a chance to enjoy, laugh and uh, feel happy about everything that they're doing. And we make them feel that, yes, they've achieved something in every session they turn out to. This is something which we do with the junior cricketers. When it comes to uh, slightly better or bigger cricketers, we need to create a platform for them where they satiate their hunger for progress and improvement. We want them to feel that, yes, they have uh, the, the best opportunity at our academy to achieve what they have come out to achieve. These are the little things that we make sure are happening at our academy. Do you think sometimes, even for like a young player, is too much emphasis put on technique. What are your philosophies on that? The balance between getting a bat batter to learn the correctness of their game versus the enjoyment. There is a balance, isn't it, to be struck? Yeah, I do agree that there's a lot of emphasis laid on technique, but we, we suggest that it's not technique alone. There is, you know, a good... Uh, balance between the technique, the tactical aspects, the mental aspects, the phys physical aspects of the game. 
combined with a good lifestyle is what gives them a career. I mean, a, the best opportunity to succeed. Technique is definitely important, but there is a line that we have to draw somewhere. You know, there are today. If you look at look around, you have different techniques and uh, different batsmen succeeding uh, in playing in their own way. The other thing is, we should not make a mistake between technique and style. Batsmen may have the scientific aspects of the game will remain the same. It has to be a full face of the bat. It has to be, you know, hitting the ball from the middle of the bat. The, all those things stay in their place. Styles may differ. Style each batsman may have a different style of uh, batting. So we need to try and uh, differentiate between the style and the technique. Overemphasis on technique could actually paralyze a batsman if they are able to manage. Some batsmen have the ability to use their feet a little better than uh, the others. So, so be it. So there would be front foot players, the back foot players. We need to encourage them in whatever they are succeeding. We uh, we intervene or we try and interfere with their technique only when repeatedly they are making a similar error and getting out uh, repeatedly in the same style. Otherwise, we have to encourage them to play in their own natural way. Of course. Uh, you know, the larger picture remains the same, but if there are some small little glitches, we could correct them. It's important to know that, yes, it's not just the technique, but the mind, uh, the mental strength, the technique, tactical strength, as well as the physical strength matter. So if a coach can uh, have them in different boxes and make sure that all of these are attended, and the sportsman and the batsman uh, in this uh, specific thing, if the batsman is uh, taking care of his lifestyle, which does not interfere with his, uh, you know, uh, the education and sport, everything has to be balanced. I think they have a better chance of seeing them succeed. What is important is not to shackle them, not to shackle a player with a particular instruction that uh, my way or the highway. We need to try and mold ourselves and try and see if uh, the batter could do something different and special, which uh, could differentiate, like we have. Uh, in India, we have the examples of uh, Muhammad Azharuddin, who had his own style of playing, and he's a legend. And then, of course, you have the Gundapa Vishwanath, who inspired me to be what I am. But being inspired by such legends, quite obviously, I would like to give my players a lot of width and interfere with the technique only when they seem to be failing or, you know, they get stuck in a particular way, that's when we interfere. You also mentioned mindset there. In, in, the, in the batting makeup, how important yes. is it? Well, I think it is hugely important. It plays a big role. The mind, it has to be clear. While the batsman... Uh, you know, uh, the other day I was reading a piece on the mind being blank and the mind being clear. Blank mind can be bad. It could be uh, a, a cause of some issues or problems. Whereas a clear mind, or knowing what kind of uh, ball is coming at you and all that, you need a clear mind. I think the mind is, uh, you know, the factory where all the thoughts are growing. So we need to make sure that the mind is clear and the mind definitely plays a big role. That's why today sports psychologists uh, are playing a big role even among the professional cricketers. I think, yes, uh, mind plays a big role in the way the batsman believes what he can do. Uh, it's a one ball game. It's a one ball game. The batsman makes one error and he could be walking back. If he, is, uh, if he has to build his confidence, the mind plays the best role. Of course, much as you may train and be good in your technique, you need to have a, a strong mind to overcome the pressures of the modern day cricket. Therefore, I suggest that yes, the mind has a big role to play. Are there any, um, <clears throat> are there any exercises that you would recommend? Visualizations, etc.? Well, we do a lot of this. Yes, I, I, have a lot of faith in this uh, system of visualization, self-talk, mentor talk, and uh, you know, narrating the success stories of uh, their peers or uh, the former cricketers. Uh, all this has a big, big role to play. And I think, yes, uh, visualization, 
not everybody may be uh, able to visualize positively but if they can develop the habit of self talk and talking to themselves about all the good things that are possible and uh, what they are capable of doing how what they worked on and what they set out to achieve i think that will help them in a big way what is your advice from a mindset perspective for a player who is perhaps struggling to convert starts and make it into a big score well uh, i think that's a very good question and this is something which is a uh, common occurrence now a lot of them uh don't realize that if they are physically tired they'll be uh, making more mistakes mentally as well so we need first of all if you have to deal with this we need to make sure that they have enough endurance uh, in them they need to work on their endurance focusing and concentrating on that little cricket ball for long periods of time is not the easiest thing to do so it needs proper training so if they have had long hits in the net and they have been spoken to about how to focus and uh, build their innings from there on and also show uh, i mean uh, teach them how to shoulder responsibility because a batsman has a huge responsibility he has to not only look after himself but he has to uh, look after the interests of the team as well now every wicket that falls could be additional pressure on the team so we need the settled batsman who's already batting on 20 or 30 or whatever he needs to learn how to carry that forward and for this again the mind plays a big role and we need to train our boys and girls to understand how how they can build from the start they've already had well we talked about that's all about kicking on etc but there are times every player goes through where they feel that they can't even hit it off the square getting a low run of scores what advice would you give a player who is struggling to even get a score at all well uh, uh, the good thing about this is that you know it's a team game and uh, if the player has enough support from uh, his teammates and the management that would be the first step and the other thing is we uh, we've had this kind of uh, uh, you know players who have struggled to get back to form that's the time when we say we tell them not to try too many things they always have to get back to the basics Play, uh, get back into the net or maybe an open net scenario or a practice game and try and make sure that they are working on the singles rotating strike going over to the non uh, the uh, safety of the non strikers end these are the little things when they spend a little time you know the penny drops and then they would be ready at some instance even in the middle of an innings they could hit good form again so it's all about spending more time in the net working with the basics looking i mean to me the singles are a very very big thing like you said yes at times they struggle to hit the ball uh, you know out of the square uh, they struggle so that has to be overcome uh, with a little bit of calm mind a good uh, guidance from the coaches and the teammates the teammates play a big role the little encouragement sometimes it happens we experience we feel that you know the parents or the uh, the social circle could put a lot of pressure and they say, they feel they have to get back and tell them what they have scored so that could be a humongous pressure we need to try and teach our young ones how to handle pressure and how to overcome these uh, little shortfalls also you know this is this kind of things do happen in life as well that's why i love this game so much it teaches you a way of life you in life there are ups and downs this game teaches us how when you're low how to bounce back how uh, how to stay now to answer your question on how or what we do is we try and give them uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, time in the middle most often uh, you know in the nets or maybe uh, if it's an open net or whatever we try and tell them that yes they just have to do the basics right watching the ball would be the uh, most important thing middling the ball and just about making sure that they are doing what they want to do make them comfortable make them feel good and then slowly step by step working on the basics if at all there is uh, a technical issue which has been blocking them if a coach can spot nothing better than that and if there is nothing it's except the mind we need to make sure that we work with the batsman's mind and help him overcome this lack of form
if we delve into the intricacies of batting, do you have any specific advice for a player who does not know which guard to take, confused about trigger movements, general batting setup, head positions, etc.? Can we get your insight on that? Yeah, uh, well, the basic thumb rule is this, that we need to have a still head. Head has to remain still. We need to be able to see what's the ball as closely, as clearly as we could. We need also to try and get the ball on our, on our offside, or rather in front of us. We don't want our front leg to be blocking the pathway. So if I can get my batsman like to roll the ball and try and play as straight as he can, middle the ball, watch the ball. In, today we talked to the pros that it's not enough if you just see the ball. You need to watch the scene. You need to read the scene. So that is at the higher level. But with the novices or those who are beginning, what we try and tell them is to try and have a still head, play under the head, and close to the front foot. So these are the basic little things. Uh, I, I don't know if I've got your question right, but these are the little things that we advise. When you talk about looking at the seam closely, does that even go for combating swing bowling? Is, it that, is that the advice you give to a player to look at it that well, closely? I think I think whether you're playing uh, spin, swing, uh, or speed, you you definitely need to keep a very very close eye on the seam as well as the shine of the ball. Now the pros are looking at the shiny side, whereas even the youngsters uh, who are about to may break into the game, they must be taught how to try and pick the seam because the seam tells you a lot which way the ball is uh, turning. For example, if it's a spinner. Uh, and he has a trick or two, the seam would tell you the story. So you have to watch the seam. And you cannot pick the seam from uh, when it's halfway down the pitch. Try and look at the seam from the, from the bowler's release point. And that would make batting that much more better, uh, more successful and enjoyable. What tips would you give to a player who's struggling to actually uh, play a spin bowler successfully? Do you advocate that front foot press? Do you want them to play more of the back foot? Do you want them to read it off the square from the hand? What advice would you give again on that subject? Yeah, one golden rule is that good use of feet, good footwork. Soft hands, these are uh, the primary requirements. If I can combat the spin and turn using my feet, I think half the battle would be won. Now, to encourage bowlers, I mean the batters uh, to play spin bowlers, we need, like I said earlier, we need to watch which way the ball might perhaps turn. Why The seam is a giveaway. If I can watch the seam, I mean, if the seam is pointing in, I have never seen a ball uh, move away from the batsman. So if I can read the seam, I'm in a better position to uh, tackle the spin bowling. When, when it comes to going through the levels, I almost see that player who, as they go through the levels and face more adult cricket, it's the pace yeah. of the ball that they struggle with, that ability to play off the back foot, that increased speed. Yes. Again, for a player who's been brought up from a young age, playing everything yes. off the front foot, making that transition, again, from a technical mindset perspective, what advice would you give to a player who's perhaps struggling on that aspect of their game? Uh, I am a very, very strong believer that batting is about so much about reactions. We need to uh, react appropriately. I always tell my batters, those who react quickly and correctly are the ones who are going to make more runs. Now, we need to have that quick reaction. And those who have quick reaction appear to have more time. The ball is taking the same time from the bowler's hand to the bat. But some batsmen appear to be uh, have a lot more time than the others only because they read it quickly and their reactions are more accurate and appropriate. Now, this would be the key. A differentiation between a player and a good player and a very good player is how he reads the ball and how quickly and correctly he reacts. The more quickly you see, the more correctly you react, 
I think the chances of you responding to that particular ball would be so much more better. So I would like to send a strong message to uh, the batters that do not think too much about it because there's very little time to think and play. You have to react, not think and play. You have to react. And those reactions have to be built in your practice, in the nets, in the practice games, and wherever. You have to build these reactions and make them so strong that the moment you see, it has to be second nature. It has to be like a second nature. You, you know you've been there, you've done that, and that kind of a reaction would help the batters uh, be more successful. Are there any specific drills that you would encourage, advise a player, as opposed to just getting simple knockdowns from their coach? Are there any specifics that they could work on? To be honest, yes, we do a lot of these uh, reaction work, reaction drills. Uh, uh, there are uh, lots of devices we use. Uh, let's say, for example, the simplest one, uh, which can be incorporated anywhere, any part of the world, is you know, uh, use a plastic ball on a slab of a granite or marble. Right? And then we use different kinds of balls. So especially this plastic ball, it really, really gives you the feel and uh, you know, the impact of a, a ball with the shine. And the reaction times are faster. We, at times, you know, we graduate from moderate speed to extremely high speed and, you know, try and train a batsman uh, to react correctly. React correctly. Many times, you know, uh, it's going to be ducking, swaying, uh, leaving the ball, and then, of course, uh, playing back, playing back with the bat as well. So these little uh, drills are very common. But with that, you know, also we use the bowling machines. We set up different speeds, different, uh, you know, uh, we have the bowling machines that spin the ball, with swing the ball. We try and put them into all this. And then, of course, there are the other, so many other drills, like the drills for the eyes and uh, how, how, you know, without moving the head, the uh, peripheral vision could be trained. There are a lot of these little, little things which we do on field, which have greatly helped the batsmen and we have seen some very, very good results. Thereby, we have reason to believe that some of our methods have really been good. What, in your opinion, do all the great batsmen, batswomen, either in the modern game today or past players, have in common from a technical perspective? I think the one thing is that their heads are still and they're watching the ball a lot more intently. They read the ball out of the bowler's hand and that leads them to correct reactions. This is something which is, you know, uh, whether it's a modern batsman or in the past, it has been the same, all right? This is uh, non-negotiable, watching the ball, head still. These, uh, this is something which I think I give a lot of uh, credit to, and uh, we train our players to try and uh, learn this. And then just to end on the last question, what is your, Best advice for a, for a young player if they came to you? Well, the best advice is uh, I tell them to enjoy the game. Most often they, they have the stars in their eyes and they have dreams uh, and they want to play for India when they come here, when they enter the gates. But we tell them the first thing that uh, is important is to understand that the game offers a lot more than what they visualize. You know, uh, it's not just the India cap. But there's so much of fun, there's so much of mateship, there's so much that they can learn. The ways of life they could learn from this are more important. Not everybody could achieve because we don't want them to uh, end up as, uh, you know, uh, disappointed uh, young men uh, when they don't get picked. We want them to love the game. We want them to enjoy the game. We want to play the game for the values and so many other things that this uh, game offers. Uh, for example, we tell them uh, it's not just the selection. But you could play for mateship, you could play for health, you could play for fitness, you could play for so many things that this game teaches. And every aspect of this game could easily be connected to ways uh, of life. So parents have started understanding this and players with the maybe the little pressure of the selections, uh, you know, being taken off from them, they play a lot better and they perform so much more better than if they were under pressure of all this. Efan, perfect. Amazing insight. Really appreciate your time. And thank you very much today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I hope I have been uh, 
in a, I mean, I've been able to give you a few points which may be useful for the young ones. And hopefully, uh, whenever there's an opportunity, they'll put this into practice and enjoy the game a lot more than what they did before they heard me. Perfect. So Neil Kagram, Cricket Life Stories, Air Fan Set. Thank you.